Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I will highlight the diversity of curatarsians and the origin of crocodilians starting in the Triassic. Now, the curatarsians were a very diverse group of archosaurs during the Triassic period. And it was during this time that they really exploited the niches vacated by the extinction of many of the synapsid reptiles that lived during the Permian. By the end of the Triassic, the Curiotarsans were on track to really be the dominant group of terrestrial animals of the planet. Most Curiotarsans are characterized by having osteoderms. These are bony scutes which cover large portions of the body. Living crocodiles and alligators have osteoderms, and the fossil record of Curiotarsans throughout the Cenozoic and Mesozoic is mostly represented by fossilized osteoderms. They have characterizing patterns that experts can use to identify species. If you're working in the Triassic terrestrial deposits, you most likely will find osteoderms as fossils. The first group of Curiotarsians are the Phytosaurs, which are a common fossil in the American Southwest during the Triassic period. They resemble uh, modern crocodilians, except for the fact that they have a nostril or nares that is elevated to the top of the forehead making them able to keep their entire snout and bodies underwater. Some remarkable fossil phytosaurs have been found in Utah, and they are a common fossil found in the Chinle Formation. The second group of Curiotarsans are the Raasukians, a diverse group that closely resembles dinosaurs, despite the fact that they are more closely related to crocodilians and exhibit a crocodile normal ankle joint. They are often confused as dinosaurs and they only live during the Triassic period. They are loosely divided into a number of groups, such as the large Ornithosuchidae, the smaller Papasauridae, and the sailback Teneosauridae, and the bipedal Chittergeridae, which includes the very dinosaur-looking Eftia, which, if I didn't tell you, you would think was a dinosaur, but it exhibits a crocodile normal ankle and is placed within the Curiotarsia clade. The final group of Triassic Curiotarsians are the heavily armored Ateliosauridae, or Stegoleptidae. They have a narrow skull that somewhat resembles an armadillo. They have expanded dorsal and ventral armor, peg-like teeth with the anterior portion of the denary edentulus, uh, possibly covered in a keratus sheath, and an expanded olecranon process on the ulna that would be useful for digging. These animals may have been able to roll their bodies into balls to protect them from being eaten by some of the larger carnivore animals that were living at the time. Osteoderms of Ateneosaurs are commonly found in late Triassic rock units, and only a handful of complete skeletons are known. During the latest Triassic, we begin to see a diversity of Crocodilla morpha, many of which did not closely resemble modern crocodiles. Many were very nimble creatures about the size of small terriers with elongated limbs for running. Others, like uh, Eurypteosuchus, resembled modern crocodiles in having a notch in the otic recess formed by the anterior sloping of the quadrate and quadratojugal bones. As a group, the Crocodilia morpha are the only Curiotarsian group that extends into the Jurassic, with a wide diversity during the Jurassic and Cretaceous. One group, the Thylatosuchia, become aquatic during the Triassic and took to being fully marine during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. 
the Thylacosuchians had a fin on their tail and their limbs were flipper-like, making them highly specialized for living in the marine environment during the Mesozoic era. Some had very long, snake-like bodies and likely never came out of the water. Modern crocodiliomorphins range from the giant Dinosuchius from the late Cretaceous, which had a length over 10 meters, and the tiny Hopiosuchius from the late Jurassic that measured only 20 centimeters in length. They are all characterized by having osteoderms, but exhibiting a wide diversity of body shapes and diets. During the Cenozoic, the crocodilia morphs were less diverse, with most resembling modern crocodilians or gavids, although a few interesting forms are known from the Eocene epoch, such as Pristachampsis, that was a fully terrestrial running predator with serrated dinosaur-like teeth, and the Sebacus, which had a high skull, unlike cro modern crocodilians. The split between alligators and crocodiles occurred during the late Eocene, and caimans likely originated in the middle to early Eocene. In the next video, we'll highlight some of the other marine reptiles of the Triassic period. For now, interpret the major patterns of Curitarsian evolution and explain the level of diversity found during the Triassic and later Mesozoic and Cenozoic. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash Links are found in the description below.